There's so many different marketing strategies out there. And if you're someone who's new and feel like you're spinning around and not sure which one works the best, in today's video, we're going to talk about the different types of marketing and how they're going to be able to achieve what you want in terms of getting more paying clients in your coaching business. and I am a visibility and marketing coach and I love helping female coaches to simplify their marketing so they can get seen, get heard and get paying clients so that they can turn this passion for coaching into a profitable business. If you're coming back and returning to my channel, welcome back. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and just support me because every vote counts. Now, there are so many different strategies that's out there in terms of marketing. Which one do you use and which one is actually more effective than another? You probably hear so many different terminology, you're confused and you're still in the space of trying to figure out who the heck do I need to talk to in order to get my paying client. You're feeling overwhelmed by the sheer number of the strategies that's out there, then welcome to my world. You are not alone. Today, we're going to talk about how to simplify this. And I'm going to share four major strategy that I believe it's going to help you in your coaching business. And I'm also going to simplify it at the end of the video, where I believe are the three most important steps. If you're thinking about leveraging your social media or leveraging networking, these are the three steps I really truly believe that it's going to help you to stay focused so that you can actually be more intentional, purposeful, and also meaningful on your social media. So let's dive right in. Now, one of the questions I get all the time is how do I choose the right marketing strategy that's out there? I hear email, I hear social media, I hear content marketing, I hear SEO. What the heck is going on out there and which one is the best? Which one is going to get me more leads? Now, I'm gonna tell you that for the years I've been in coaching business, all of them work, but not all of them are going to be your strategies because marketing result comes from consistency. So let's say you're someone who is uncomfortable in being on social media or creating content on YouTube and video is just not your forte, then it makes perfect sense why the consistency isn't there, right? So the right marketing strategies always come down to what makes you feel most comfortable, that you can do it while the most uh, resistant to the things that you have to do. So if you have to wake up and feeling dreading to create a post or to put up a video, or you have to spend hours and hours just to put the makeup on so that you can look uh, appropriate and professional on a video, then chances are that's going to create a barrier for you. And that will stop you from being consistent. And without the consistency, then you're audience probably cannot expect when are you going to be on again, right? So you see the only right strategies or the right marketing strategy is the one that you can keep it up and that you can consistently producing and that would lead into the result that you want. So how do you choose the right marketing strategy? You pick one that is easiest for you, that is simplest for you. You may not know how to do it in the first place, but that's something that you can learn, right? Marketing is a skill that you can learn as you go through this process of putting your message out. So it's a skill, not something that inherited someone just good with marketing. All these marketers, they learned that skill somewhere. They didn't just wake up one day and you know what, today I, I feel like I'm a great marketer, so I'm just gonna be a marketer. It's a skill that they have learned and so can you learn that skill. Now, you don't need to be an expert in marketing, but you can learn that skill. So picking the right one means that you're just going to go with one. So let's say social media is the easiest one for you. Okay. So maybe you are on Instagram and you have been on Instagram. You just haven't been positioning yourself as a business owner or talking about your coaching service. If that's who you are, you've been following other people's feet, then that's spin that role around and make you the person who's becoming the authoritative figure so that you can position your business, your brand, and so that other people can start following you. So you just pick one, you go with it, 
and don't change quickly. And that's something that uh, I'm going to talk about some in, in another video, but we're not going to talk about dive into that today. So picking the right marketing strategy depends on what your com comfort level is, how much you know about social media, how much you know about creating, writing blog, writing article, producing video. It really depends on the knowledge that you have. So comment down below, which has been the easiest way for you to create content. Do you like more writing or do you like more video? Comment down below. I would love to see what is your most comfortable way of creating content thus far right? Thus far, because again, this is a skill that you can learn, you can use it as you progress. But what is the most comfortable way for you to produce your content right now? Is it writing or is it producing video? Comment down below. Let me know. All right. So once you pick your marketing strategy that you want to go into, so that's say social media, that's just go with social media for now. Okay. So social media is going to be my way of spreading the message, bringing the brand, brand awareness. Your next step is take ownership of that platform. It means that forget about all these shiny objects, no matter what your peers telling you, oh, LinkedIn got this new feature and you should be totally be on LinkedIn. I want you to stay focused and just own the platform that you have chosen and give it all in, be there. It takes time for you to build that online presence. Okay, so no more shiny objects, stay focused. And this is the only time probably in your life where you want to have that tunnel vision. <laughs> that tunnel vision actually works in this case scenario because when you have so many options and so many uh, distractions that's out there, it steer away what you really wanted to do. And chances are, if you really stay focused, committed, and engage your followers on one platform, that's going to bring you as much result as you would have if you spread yourself too thin. So once you pick a strategy, social media, then pick a platform that you can focus on and you're taking the ownership of it and build your online presence there. And what that essentially is going to do is it's going to create these search engine keywords because you're on there all the time and hopefully by the time that you pick social media you already have an idea of who that avatar is your niche your keywords and that's going to allow the search engine to pick up your profile more easily over time it doesn't happen overnight again things will need to uh, give it some time in order for the search engine to work so if you don't have your niche, if you don't know who you're targeting, I do have the resource link down below. You can go ahead and download a three steps to find your profitable coaching niche. That's, that worksheet is going to help you to define your niche and also find your avatar. So I'll share the link down below in this video. But you wanted to make sure that you have those keywords identified. You want to have your key target audience identified when you are slowly building that online presence. Okay. If you don't know who they are and you're just keeping it broad, that's okay too. What I would suggest is you pick up to three topics, three topics that you're very passionate about sharing on that platform. If you want to keep your niche really super general. Okay, so let's say you don't have an niche, you don't know who you're targeting, but you're really passionate about how to play tennis. Then pick how to play tennis as your topic of interest and just talk about that. So if you're in the coaching field, then you wanted to pick a topic, say for example, when I first started out, I picked negative self-talk. So a lot of the negative self-talk, judgment, how to release the judgment, how to let go of things that no longer serve you. Those were the topic that I have focused on and they were Works because it was focused. So whatever that you do and choose, make sure that you identify three things or three topic or three big overarching key uh, takeaway that you want your audience to learn from you. Pick three of those and focus on that in building your online presence because that's going to allow you to uh, be, be identified using those keywords because of that topic. All right, so once you have that online presence, you the next step is to actually to drive the traffic to that platform, right? So if you're someone who has a website, then the goal is to have everybody going to the website. If you have a social media platform, then the goal is actually to bring everybody to that platform that you are on. So let's say you happen to be on LinkedIn and you're commenting on your peers' uh, a post, 
then you wanted to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is also sending the traffic to the platform that you want your audience to be on. So if you're going to be uh, sending all the traffic to Instagram, then you better make sure that all the traffic that are coming from LinkedIn, you're pointing people to go, hey, this is where you can follow me. Come follow me on my Instagram. Or if you're on Facebook, you wanted to make sure that you also tell your audience, hey, I'm hanging out on Instagram. Come and follow me on Instagram. Or if you're producing YouTube videos, then you wanted to do the same, right? So you wanted to pick one direction and one thing only and direct all the traffic there so that people are clear in terms of where can I follow you and where can I find you most of the time, okay? Most of the time. So that's about driving traffic and driving those leads into the platform that you want to be on, that you feel comfortable. So if you have a blog post and that's where you want the traffic to be, then all your social media posts should be directing to that blog post. Hey, this week, this is what I published. Go and check it out here. So you want to get clear instruction in terms of where you want your audience to go so that you can drive the traffic to that particular platform or website. All right. So. Once you have picked the right marketing strategies, you're going to focus on social media and you're going to build uh, your online presence on that particular platform and you're driving all the traffic to that platform. The next step is how do you right, get more leads and how do you n collect them? Well, I, I hate the word collecting because it feels like I'm, I'm collecting a whole bunch of items with their people, right? So how do you cultivate that community sense where people can follow you for more resources and, and where they can maybe have a deeper conversation with you, a relationship with you? So one of the things that you might want to consider is creating a community. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can create community and Facebook is doing great with uh, building the community, right? So you always have the Facebook group. My personal favorite is is I have this email community where I bring people into my email world so that I can have conversation with them almost feeling like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. When I send email, I don't send bulk email. I send emails that feels like I'm talking to individual. And in my mind, when I'm writing email, I'm also imagining I'm talking to my best friend, right? Because one person, one subscriber on your email, that subscriber is trusting you a lot and giving you a lot of trust. So those of you who's on my email list, I really, truly appreciate you trusting me with your email. And I promise you, I will only deliver the values in those emails. And so that's something that you want to do for your community member when people trust you enough to give you something that intimate and that close to you. And that creates an extra step of bonding the opportunity for you to provide even more values than you usually would in an open platform or a social media platform. I can write a lot of different smaller tidbits on my social media platform, on my Facebook, but where my audience get the most is actually being on my email, right? Being on my email, it means that on a regular basis, I'm providing a lot more values than I would have on the social media platform because the nature of the social media platform is just much less in terms of the educational piece, more of the entertainment piece. So. If you want more resource, comment down below and I will reach out to you and I'll share how you can become part of my community. All right, so once you have your online presence, you drive the traffic to your platform and you have a way of bringing your community together, then your next step is building that relationship. And this is the, the whole uh, heart and soul of why you do what you do, right? It's about building that relationship. So every time you show up on social media, it's about building that relationship. Think of it as a big networking platform, networking place where you get to connect with all the people from all over the world, different places with different backgrounds, different beliefs. And it's a big opportunity for coaches to have this networking place to build relationship. Some of the relationship may translate into a transaction, right? Someone may book a call with you and they become your client. But some of these other relationships, well, the, these conversations, it just become a collaboration, a, a mutual connection, and you build friendship through just being on this big social platform. So 
Building a relationship is definitely a big one, and it's probably the only reason why you're spending so much time right out there and you're creating posts, you're writing content, you're sharing your knowledge, you're being there to be educational and both entertaining. So a lot of it has to do with building that relationship. Now, once you start building relationship and you have something that's valuable that could potentially help, then it is your opportunity to actually offer that. So as I'm summarizing all this, right, there's so many different marketing strategies that's out there. There's social media marketing, there's email marketing, there's SEO marketing, there's content marketing, all these different things. Which one do you pick? The one that you pick is the one that actually works. <laughs> and obviously it's the one that you feel most comfortable in doing. So if you're going to be on social media, think about how am I going to build my community once I have a group of these super fans to keep commenting on my posts, who want to hear more from me, who would like to have more resource from me? What can I do to create a community for them? It could be email. It could be a Facebook group that you, you bring them together, right? The more that you're out there, people are looking for a way to getting closer to you. So what is your next step to bring people closer to you? And that's what you want because the relationship just get tighter and tighter. And so if I were to summarize the three steps of why you are on social media or why in this online world and marketing, it really just come down to these three steps. And these three steps are number one, you're building an online presence. You're creating a brand awareness, right? It's to let the audience know, to let your followers know that you have a business, it's running and you're a coach and this is what you do. And it is also an opportunity for you to network with other business owners. So step one is to create that online presence, having that brand awareness and also to network. And step two is because you're online presence, you don't just wanna be showing up and keep selling people. Right. So you want to build relationship. So you want to have conversation. And this is a big mistake I see a lot of uh, coaches making is they think that social media is just a big selling place. Social selling. Right. You hear that word too, social selling. And so that what they do is they do a lot of these promotional posts and it's all about selling, 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 selling. And you can tell that they don't get a whole lot of engagement because they're selling all the time. And so if you want engagement, you don't want to be that person who keeps selling, selling, selling. You want to build relationship. And what will build a relationship? Conversation will build relationship. You want to invite your audience to have conversation with you and not just, hey, I, I'm, I'm creating this post and therefore I'm going to ask you to engage with me so that it would boost my, boost my engagement rate. No, you actually want to be genuine. And some of these conversations may not directly relate to your coaching business at all. It would just be like everyday conversation. That's how you build trust, how you build relationship on social media. It's a social place. So go and social with your people. Okay, so that's step number two. Step number three is you want to have a way of capturing your leads. And I call these uh, leads because of the, the nature of the topic that we're talking about. But if you really look at it, it's every person that you're planning to serve, that you're planning to make a difference in their life, every person who come into your world, there's a way for you to help. And so think of it as, what can I do to help this person? And so I use the lead here, but you can replace that for the context of our nature of being a coach. And the third step is really the value-based marketing, right? So all the content that you're producing, it needs to provide value. It needs to provide a purpose. It needs to help someone either to create that awareness or to help someone gain a new perspective. And it also needs to be something that's helpful. So look at all the things that you're creating. If I go to your platform, can I tell what you do? If not, then we need to think about going back to step number one, right? Your online presence, your brand awareness. Are you providing those values? And are you reinforcing the fact that this is something of your expertise and something that you can help others to accomplish what they want to accomplish. And I hope this is helpful. Comment down below again, what is your most favorite 
way of reaching out to your audience? Are you someone who's、uh, more in favor of writing, or are you someone who's more in favor of creating video? Where is your comfort zone, and what would you like to see more of coming from me? I would also love to hear that. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. 